Hello lovelies! Pop culture magic. What is it? Is it valid? We're gonna have a look at that together today. This is gonna be the first in what I'm gonna do as a series of videos on pop culture magic. I tried to squeeze it all into one video. It just got lengthy and unwatchable. So I'm gonna split it up and try to make this more consumable for you guys. So today, obviously, we're gonna look at what it is and if it's valid. So there's a few questions surrounding this that I wanna touch on. So I've got some notes here and we're gonna try to work through them together. Pop culture magic is a pretty new phenomenon on the magic scene. Even if it's been around for 60 to 100 years, it's still really, really new. And that's why I think that having these kinds of conversations is so important. We really are the pioneers of this kind of craft, and that's why, you know, it's so necessary that we have these discussions and that we put this information out there. And it's so fantastic to me that we have a platform like YouTube where me, just with a tablet, I can enter into this discussion as well. So that's really great. So the first question, what is pop culture magic, can be sort of summed up into a few words. It's a magical system that incorporates elements uh, from film, TV, you know, anything that's popular to a person. I'm gonna give you guys a pretty controversial example of this. Some people are gonna jump on me immediately and be like, no, <laughs> but it's still the example that I'm gonna go with just because it's so well known, and that's Wicca. Now, when we look at Wicca's history, it's definitely a tumultuous topic. Um, you know, Gerald Gardner does claim that he was initiated into this long line of witchcraft. Uh, but when we look at the information that's been put out there from Wiccans, we can definitely see trends and tropes that exist in other magical systems, namely things like the Lema or the Golden Dawn. Um, there's inspiration from Margaret Murray's writings. Um, you know, it, it really was an amalgamation of the things that were popular to Gerald Gardner at the time, and he's am amalgamated all those different aspects into a single working system, which has then become popular and now has this huge lineage uh, of, you know, initiates into that tradition. So it doesn't matter if we're looking at Hecate or Wonder Woman, the process of creating one of these systems is going to essentially be the same. Whether we're looking at a mythological figure or a figure from pop culture, the process of working through their mythology, working through their mythos and constructing a practice that's symbolic and representative of that, it's going to be the same. I'll go ahead as well and let you guys know my personal tradition that I practice is centered around Digimon, uh, the anime from the 90s. If you want to know more about that specifically, I will leave a link to a, my Tumblr uh, where I've written at length regarding uh, some, some of the things within the nature of my tradition. Now I do want to move on to the topic of validity. Now this is a hot topic when it comes to pop culture magic. You see words like Plagan be thrown around and Oh, it makes me so angry, but I really don't want to come at this from an angry place because this really is something that I love and adore so much, so I'm going to try to stay positive. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my example here of Gerald Gardner. Um, this claim that he was initiated into a lineage of witches really set a trope for the magic user community. From that point, you definitely see all these other people, you know, oh yeah, you know, I was initiated by my great-grandmother and she was a witch and all this sort of thing. You know, it's, it's so common that I don't even have to name names. You know the people that I'm talking about. Whether or not Gardner's lineage is accurate and it's true, it doesn't matter because it started this trend of falsifying lineage in the first place. Now I bring up lineage because People often think that somehow having a system of magic that's older will make it more authentic, more valid, and more practical, and that's simply not the case. Ultimately, in results-driven magic, what's important is that it's functional and that it works. For me, I don't really care what people think about me using an anime as the central spoke of my practice, because it's functional, it works, I, I achieve the results that I seek. I really feel that that's how we should be judging magical systems, is less, is it ancient, and more, does it fucking work? Because if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter how old that practice is, it's still not going to be of use to anyone. So, for an example, you see these people who scour witchcraft trial records trying to find historically accurate practices and beliefs, and it's like, you know, the the familiar spirits, the Sabbath, these were all 
memes. They were what was in vogue at the time. So even the people that would have been using these to do magic were probably taking what was popular at the time and doing magic with it, which is exactly the same thing as what we are doing today, taking these ideas in pop culture and using magic, you know, using them to do magic. I think with all things in spirituality, the only person who can prove validity is oneself through practice, through trial and error. Without that, you know, there's no way that somebody else can say, yay or nay, your practice is valid. I'm just going to get all the controversy up in this video, because it's probably going to be the first one that I upload. Um, what, from my own practice, I was working with one of the Loa from the African Buddha traditions for many, many years, maintaining a shrine to them and performing services to them. If I had, during that time, approached an African traditionalist, they would have said, no, you're not an initiate, your practice is not valid, you shouldn't be working with that spirit. I continued that practice though for many years and achieved many great results, you know, having that relationship with that spirit. I do, I do feel comfortable talking about this now because since then I have actually seen an African traditionalist, had a proper reading done, they confirmed that yes, voodoo is a path that you can go down if you want to, but ultimately I decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do and since have ceased working with that spirit. I no longer, I no longer maintain an altar or have service to them. The point is, if you keep your mouth shut, nobody's going to be able to tell you either way. And I know that might seem a little bit hypocritical since I was just before like, look at all this stuff that I've written at length about my tradition. But what I haven't gone into in those posts is my personal experience, my personal relationship with the spirits, you know, and the, the workings that I'm doing specifically. I do definitely think it's important that people feel confident enough and welcome enough to be able to post their experiences on places like YouTube and Tumblr and not feel as though that's an obligation. You know, that's not something that you have to do, but it's awesome if you feel like you've constructed a safe space where you can speak about those experiences. In fact, on the topic of sharing experiences and validity, I myself have gotten to interact with a number of academics who have been doing studies and things like that on the nature of pop culture magic. And being one of those people who's helped to shape the way this community is viewed, it's so important and empowering to me and it's something that I really, really care about and that's why I want to be able to feel like I can be open and honest and not have to worry about, you know, any sort of backlash or people you know, who clash with my ideas. Because if you spend more than five minutes around any, you know, well-read, intellectual, pop culture magician, you'll find that this isn't escapism, this isn't, you know, idiocy, this is authentic and actual spiritual practice, and having that academic acknowledgement is just so fantastic. I think that's all I really wanted to say regarding the nature of pop culture magic and its validity. Um, if you guys have any further questions around this sort of thing, definitely leave them in the comments below. The next video that I plan, plan to do is going to be around the ideas of ownership and intention of creators. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to keep track of the content that I'm putting up. And I hope this video has been informative or at the very least entertaining. I hope you're well. Mwah.